All right, welcome back. Let's get right into it. Exclusive interview with Roger Stone. Uh, Roger joins us again. Frank Morano is also with us. Roger, I have different insights into this personally from different angles. I'm a friend of Patrick Burns. I'm a friend of yours. I've been following this stuff for the show. Um, and I, I think there's a blockbuster story in here that we're looking at this Flynn case so close. Was there the same type of FBI misconduct in your case as well? Well, first of all, it's important to recognize that the judge in my case specifically barred me or my lawyers from raising the question of misconduct by the special counsel's office, the FBI, the Justice Department, or any member of Congress, Adam Schiff. Uh, so I wasn't allowed to raise any of this, but there were not one, but two incidents in which the FBI sent to me someone who was an undercover informant in an attempt to entrap me. Uh, the first time was uh, in May of 2016, Around the same time that uh, FBI informants were approaching Carter Page and George Papadopoulos, a man whose name he said was Henry Greenberg uh, reached out to me and he told me he had valuable information on Hillary Clinton uh, that he thought would be of great value to the Trump campaign. So I agreed to meet him uh, in South Florida. Uh, I learned only when I arrived that he was an ethnic Russian. Uh, he told me he had this terrific blockbuster information on Hillary. And I said, well, before I could examine it, I couldn't tell you whether it was of any value whatsoever. And he said, well, that's going to cost you $2 million. And I laughed and I said, well, first of all, I don't have $2 million. Second of all, if I did have $2 million, that's not how I would spend it. <laughs> he said, no, you don't get it. It's not your $2 million I want. It's Donald Trump's $2 million. And I said, well, you don't get it. Donald Trump isn't spending $2 million on uh, opposition research. So I guess this meeting is over. Only later did I learn that this gentleman's real name was not Henry Greenberg. His real name was Vaslavich Bastetsov, uh, and that he was uh, only in the country on an FBI informant's warrant. Uh, it was a warrant that had been extended nine times, signed off on by the FBI office of the uh, Miami office of the FBI, uh, and uh, that he had been working for them. Fortunately, I had turned him down flat, uh, and uh, this matter, actually, uh, I had forgotten all about it when I testified for the House Intelligence Committee. I sent a letter to the committee uh, informing them of this meeting in which nothing illegal happened, and nothing illegal happened as a result of the meeting, and only later would I find out that he was an active FBI informant. He was only in the country on an informant's visa because he had been convicted of a violent gun crime uh, in Russia, and therefore he could only be in the country uh, uh, at the sufferance of the government. And Roger, uh, there was a there was a, an argument, a Brady argument in the Maria Butina case, where Patrick Byrne came out and said that he was an informant, and he had told the FBI that he didn't think Maria Butina was an agent. Um, and I guess apparently you believe that he was an informant sent to get information on you as well. Well, he contacted me in um, October of 17th of uh, 2018, uh, pardon me, of 2017, uh, and uh, invited me out to Utah, speak to a small dinner out there. I must tell you, I liked him enormously. He's a terrific guy. I actually saw him as someone who should run for public office. We had a lot of commonality in our libertarian views. He's a great champion of medicinal marijuana, uh, which 38 states now, I believe, have legalized. Uh, but after dinner, he grilled me pretty aggressively about WikiLeaks and the Russians and what really happened. I didn't think much of it at that time. Uh, and then again, in April of 2018, he invited me to lunch, but he insisted that lunch be in his suite at his hotel. Uh, and uh, kind of the same routine. We had a general political discussion, but once again, he, he questioned me pretty aggressively, friendly, but aggressively about the Russians and WikiLeaks and so on. Still didn't think much of it. Uh, of course, there was no information to say. I knew nothing more than I've said publicly. Then he subsequently went public, as you know. I think Sarah Carter broke the story that he was an FBI informant, that he was working for the FBI. He contacted me, he was very apologetic, 
Um, he knew that I'd done nothing wrong, uh, and uh, but he was indeed the FBI handler, shall we say, for Maria Butina. So in my view, Comey's FBI tried twice to set me up the same way they tried to set up General Flynn. It's interesting that in the Mueller report, Mueller airbrushes this entirely in one paragraph saying that uh, a man named Henry Ochinsky, which is a name I'd never heard before, but I later learned was the criminal alias, one of several aliases for this gentleman, Vasilevich Bastetsov, uh, approached Roger Stone to try to sell him material, but, uh, but we were unable to confirm that he was an agent of the Russian government. They didn't even mention that he was an FBI informant. Just another example of the handy works of uh, Andrew Weissman. Any, any, um, anything in, and anything, anything you read that's that the government disclosed that Patrick Byrne um, was working on their behalf when he was grilling you. Anything exculpatory? Any Brady information that you think should have been included and wasn't? Unfortunately, I can't comment because all of the records in my case are under protective seal. And therefore, I'm prohibited from discussing them whatsoever. Uh, so I'm sorry, I can't respond to your question. Uh, but I believe that the FBI tried twice to entrap me. Let's leave it at that. I have never disclosed the Patrick Byrne matter publicly before this show, uh, mainly because I liked him so much. And I, I felt, actually felt badly for him because I think he was being cross-pressured. Evidently, he had been very helpful to the FBI many years ago in exposing an insider trading a scheme, uh, and therefore they had confidence in him. He's a highly capable individual. Uh, I'm sorry that this uh, incident probably destroyed any chance of him uh, seeking public office because I do think he'd be excellent from his the point of view as a, an experienced business person, a, an experienced executive. But at the time he reached me, I think he was working for them. Wow. And I think he, I think he was doing so in good faith it was only later that he figured out there was no Russian collusion. Well, Roger, a lot of people think the FBI and law enforcement in general tend to be the good guys. So you can't blame Patrick for starting out under that impression, uh, thinking he was helping the, uh, the good guys. Um, Roger, before we run out of time, I saw Florida Congressman Matt Gates say he thinks the president's going to pardon you. Certainly the president, I wouldn't think, would be uh, putting out these supportive tweets if that wasn't at least something he was thinking about. Have you gotten any indication from the president or anybody close to the president that a pardon uh, could be forthcoming? No, uh, Frank, I can honestly say other than Matt Gates, who I have a, a great friendship with and who I have a high regard for, I have no formal indications of a pardon. I haven't been promised one or assured one. I cannot assume one. Uh, and therefore, I have to continue to be prepared to uh, appeal. I filed a notice of appeal. As you know, there was some very egregious misconduct by the jury four woman. She got caught red-handed posting anti-Roger Stone posts, not just anti-Trump posts, but attacking me by name on Twitter and Facebook in 2019, and then says with a straight face that she right. has no bias against me. All right, we got to no. leave it there, Roger. Thank you so right. much. You're the bomb. And uh, go to stonedefensefund.com. Stay right there for more Liquid Lunch right after this.